Hey, welcome to Gridiron Gurus for the Kennebec Journal Morning Sentinel. I'm Travis Lazarczyk alongside Drew Bonfin, as always. Drew, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am ready for this rainstorm we're going to get tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to make things interesting. Ooh, scary rain, wind. Um, our guest this week is Mesolonsky head coach Walter Polkey. Coach, thanks for being here. Thank you. Last time you were with us, you were coaching at Marana Cook. You're now at Mesolonsky. Um, another rebuilding process for you. It's nothing new to you. You've done it at Marana Cook in the past, like we said, and Spruce Mountain. Um, what are some of the challenges to doing it at a new school? Well, one of the biggest challenges we have here is the competition is much different. Mm -hmm. um, our conference is very, very strong, very senior dominated. Right. Um, you know, and our, our roster that we have is not a very traditional Class B North roster. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, what it is, it just, it just takes time with repetitions, you know, getting a new system in. You know, it, it takes, with the spread offense that we run, you know, it, it takes a little more, you know, six weeks to run. Sure. You know, you know we, we need an off season. We need, a, uh, you know, things like that, get, get, getting kids in the weight room. Um, the great, great sign, you know, we have 51 kids on the roster. Yeah. You know. Um, which I think last year they built 28, right, right around there, 28, 30. Um, that's a great sign. Uh, we're playing, got kids playing three games a week. You know, we got a varsity, we got a JV, we got a freshman games, um, which is wonderful. Um, the youth program, they had actually to add two teams this year to the youth program. Good. Um, we did some summer clinics, coaching clinics with the youth kids and for the youth, youth coaches and uh, for the youth kids. So hopefully we can keep that momentum going and um, hopefully turn this thing around quickly. Yeah, I mean, uh, at Miranda Cook, uh, you know, you came in after they had a winless season, uh, and you, you got results pretty much right away. started winning games in that, in that class E league. This time, it, the, the results haven't translated on, on the, uh, in, the, in the standing. So has that been a challenge just to kind of make sure kids are still engaged, still giving and everything? Yeah. I mean, how have you been kind of uh, well, making sure that that's – Taking it's, place. It's very, it's it's difficult. You know, it's very difficult. Um, you know, me personally, I've never lost more than three games in my life at any time. <laughs> so, as a player or a coach, you know, um, so like when I was in college, my worst college season was eight and three. Sure. So, oh, wow. um, this is not this is this is new territory for me. But one thing though, it's you know, coming with energy every day. Coaches come with energy every day. The practice today was the was the best offensive practice we had all season. You know, um, you know, kid, you you're, you're seeing kids, you, you know, making football decisions, making football right. plays, um, not just you know knowing the scenario, knowing the situation. You know, it's 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 making that turn, which is a great thing to see. Um, especially with the younger players, you know, our younger kids have, have been great. You know, they're right now they're they're four and two. Um, the freshman team, I think, is three and zero. Oh. Okay. Um, so it's just, you know, it's just you have to realize too. In our team, only two kids in our team have ever won a varsity game. Oh wow! Just wow. two, Declan Thurston and Brandon Bayou are the only two that have ever played in a varsity game and won. So that's a hurdle that we have to we have to jump. You know, and so it, what it is, it's, it's just staying with the process, you know, just keep staying with the process, believing in the process. It, the process works, you know, getting that, that process is going to work. Just, just stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Because if you, if I falter and I waver and the coaches waver, what are the kids going to think? Right. Yeah. Right. It's got to be nice when you see that, that turn when they're just, you know, reacting instead of, you know, thinking on the field. Yeah, it's, you know, you know and it, a lot of the, when you watch tape of our games and things like that, you'll, you'll see, like, um, we, we're we losing the situations, you know, uh, against Hamden, it, you know, something as simple as a pooch kick, you know, stuff like that, that you're now, okay, I've been through it, I know what's happened, I know right. I, what I can do, I know what the situation, you, you can practice it and practice it and practice it, but to actually do it under the lights is a totally different thing. Sure. Because in practice, it's controlled. You know, and on, you know, on the lights course of the pressure and things like that. But um, you know, it's just with our kids, it's just playing and playing, and it's getting them playing and playing and playing. And that's why I'm not, when I met Mr. Foy and he asked me about a freshman team, I go, "Yes, yeah. we we don't want kids standing on the sidelines. We want kids right. playing. We want kids mm -hmm. knowing that if they do a good job, they're going to play in a game." And I remember talking to you after a game against Mount Blue earlier in the year, and you said. Uh, 
you know, they need to get their, their football IQ up to where it needs to be. Does that make it, does that make it easier versus if this was a senior, a senior laden team where the, where the, you know, the floor just gave out on the team, does it make it easier to say, okay, you know, we're, we're, we're teaching them things here. There's, there's a little bit more uh, reason for them to be having some of the struggles that they are. Yeah, it's, it's one thing, that, you know, football, um, it's a very physical game, okay? Mm-hmm. But you have to know what to do. <laughs> like, like, you know, you, it's, it's more than just blocking and hitting. It's, it's how you hit. It's where you hit. It's um, sealing the edge. It's, it's little things like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, those are things that a lot of our, um, that we're teaching. Because my style is much, much different than these kids have done all their whole lives. These guys are mostly wing tee, double tight, right. you know, no shotgun, don't throw the ball. You know, we're, we're spread option, we're throwing the ball, we're, we're getting the ball on the outside trying to at least. So knowing the angles, knowing the line assignments, things like that, and that's, that's the detail part that makes it take a little while. Same thing on defense. You know, we are very simple but very multiple. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing, knowing what leverage do I have, you know, knowing do I have a deep third, do this guy's the flat defender, I stay back, you know, in the beginning of the season, we'll have two guys in the flat, next thing you know, the ball goes deep, <laughs> you know, what you can't have, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting better, and we also, we have a lot of kids, though we have a lot of seniors, a lot of these seniors are first-year players, right. a lot of these juniors, we have two kids that start, juniors, they're both first-year players. Hmm. So they haven't played football since their sophomore year. So, you know, in, in some ways, they're still, they're big freshmen. Yeah. Basically. Do you like this task, the, you know, being able to be a teacher as much as a, as much as a coach and, you know, building a team like this and trying to, and trying to get a program started and, and, and going here? Do you like that, that challenge? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. You know, the first, the, the first coaching job I ever got was with Gabby Price. And that's when Huston was um, just coming up through. And they were sure. just breaking a stride. And, um, you know, my, he, my years with Gabby, I, I learned so much from Gabby. And, um, you know, this, just that, the, the psychological part of football I love. I, I love the chess match. I love the competition of it. I love, I love you know, can I, put my, can I put my players in a place to beat your players? Right. You know, that, that, that match of the game is, is, is my favorite part of it. And plus, I, I love coaching kids. I love teaching. You know, when you see that, when you see someone get it, so you see him struggle, 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 then all of a sudden that light bulb comes on and you yeah. see him succeed. It's it's one of the greatest feelings you get, sure. especially as a coach. Yeah, you kind of hit on this a little bit, coach. You're learning a new league, and it's a tough league for a young team to kind of learn varsity football, you know, on the fly like they are, and you don't have the institutional memory that maybe some of the coaches that are across the field from you have what's it been like kind of you know all of you learning this together oh it's you know it's been um yeah really it's two the coaches don't know me either true <laughs> so so it's a whole new in, in some ways you can think that we're we're basically starting a new team you know the the coaching staff um i have one holdover from last year um and basically everyone's new mm-hmm. um course our style everything's new um but that's what makes it exciting you know when, when you see that come together and you see it work it's it's a it's 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 an awesome it's an awesome thing okay we'll look at some teams that are kind of uh peaking right now with two ga- two games left in the regular season uh drew and i kind of went through and picked one team from class mm-hmm. b one team from c and one team from d uh drew let's start with d um Coming off a loss, but it's probably Oak Hill. Yeah, I mean that team has really made some strides uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks. I saw them uh, early in the season, their first game against York, and then I saw them against Madison. Granted, it's Madison, a team that's having some uh, some you know tough times of its own, but they just look like a completely different team. They 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 had no running attack at all against York, and this time against Madison, you could tell they were shaking tacklers. They looked they just. They ran with they just ran with more conviction, more confidence. You know, you didn't see as much, uh, you know, tentative running uh, here. They throw the ball better. Uh, their defense, their defense is playing more physically, and they have a really interesting game on tap here with Spruce Mountain, which is going to kind of further um, further give a, give them a sign of how far they come along. 
even beyond that game against Bucksport that they just had, that was uh, that was looking, you know, Bucksport, we talked about it last week. That was a team that came in uh, allowing only 13 points all season across yes. five games. And Oak Hill had a 14 nothing lead on them in the, on the fourth quarter before that game got away. And Bucksport ended up pulling out a 21-14 to lead. But, I mean, we were looking at, at the beginning of the season at this game against Spruce and then the game against Lisbon coming up after that and looking like it was going to be a really, really rough end of the season sure. for Oak Hill. Not anymore. This is, this is, you know, who knows? They're going to win these games, but these, these, are, uh, these are going to be competitive games. I actually have them uh, winning this week because uh, just, they, they just feel like a team that's really started to find their stride. And it's, that's been the case in recent years. They get better as the season goes along, and they find what yeah. they haven't been able to do at the start, and they fix it. Yeah, they're, I mean, it's not the same players, but this is a program that did win back-to-back-to-back state championships. Um, that institutional memory, that pride has to count for something. Yeah, and it always sounds like coach speak when you talk to Doucette after week one or week two, and he says, we just need to get better. We just need to, uh, you know, we're going we're, we're gonna to make, make improvements. We're going uh, to fix this, fix that. But he means it because he's seen, he has seen that take place over time and seen it happen over and over again that their team at week six is not the same as the team from week two. And uh, they have some talent on that team. We were talking about that back at the way beginning before uh, the season even began, and you're starting to see that talent come out. You're starting to see those guys who played as freshmen and sophomores start to show that experience. So, yeah, they're, 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 they're three and three, so it's easy to, over, to overlook them, but they're looking like a team that you probably shouldn't be taking lightly right now. All right. All right, in Class C, um, it's probably Winslow, which it's tough to say for a team that's 5-1 and one, that's hitting their, their stride now because, you know, they lost to Wells earlier and then have just gone scorched earth on everybody since. Uh, kind of a tough game last week at MCI. They were down 19-14 at the half, and then they score 47 points in the second half and win 61-37. Uh, to 37. Oh, so that game is final. It's not still. It's no, not still going. It might still be going. There might be a fifteen-yard penalty that I just missed or something. <laughs> like that. that game got over just before ten o'clock, which is way too long for a high school game. I don't know if you've ever been in the middle of one of those where you just wanted to, you know, you keep looking at the clock and it feels like it's going forward, not backwards. Yeah, I've been a lot of those. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember, uh, uh, you know, with Meselonski, when um, it was two years ago, they had uh, they had uh, Austin Belletier. And back. Egan, yeah. 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 yeah, they played Scott Egan. Yeah, that, that's exa- it was in no, by the fourth quarter, nobody could make a stop. Make a make a tackle. It would just be, Belter would just go up the middle and go the whole way, and then, then Marcus Christopher, boom, 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 and score. And it was, well, it seems like nobody like can stop half. Winslow right now. They throw the ball, they run the ball. Um, they got just enough stops against MCI to pull away late. Uh, big game against Herman on uh, Saturday afternoon at Pool and Field. A win there should probably lock up the number one seed for the Black Raiders in the uh, Class C North playoffs. Yeah, and I remember you saying at the at the start of the season that with the players that they had coming back, that they probably deserve to be called the favorite in Class C North, and they're really looking like it. Uh, I mean, it's just just the the degree to which they win these games and just put these teams away. It's a, it's just an unrelenting offense. I haven't had a chance to see them uh, in person like you have, but uh, it, it just seems like. You know, when you play them, there's just no let up. It's just it, it, they just keep coming at you over and over again. They put and the game's over in a matter of minutes. They've, they're really operating at a high level right yeah, now. Yeah, they've had I think over a dozen players score at least one touchdown. That's unheard of. What is what has been so uh, the the key to that so far? Has it just been the straight the straight running attack and just the line taking taking? Yeah, they're dominating or, on the front. Yeah, um, players like uh, um, Ronan Drummond, you know, leading the line as a captain on, at tackle. Um, they're just, you know, if you if you dominate the front, you know, you know, you're gonna have your way. So I remember because I saw them play uh, Winthrop um, mm. on, on, on in the exhibition game. Yeah, yeah and uh, they have a, their typical old school Winslow team. Yeah. Big fullback. They're gonna run that inside veer, outside veer. They got a fast quarterback, but they got two guys on the outside, about six two piece. Yeah. So. You know, you, you load the box, they're going to play action on you. You don't load the box, you're going to get a 230-pound fullback coming at you all day long. Yeah. And then on defense, same thing. The two guys in the middle, they're, very, they're just special players in the middle. And that's yeah. a team in, uh, in, in Winthrop that's been, you know, doing really well, yep. really, really well on their own. So if you can, uh, <laughs> if you can make them look silly, that's, that's uh, doing a lot. Yeah. All right, and in Class B, we think the team that's kind of on the rise right now is Mount Blue, uh, coming off a big win against and it's against Gardner, I think, last yeah. week. Um, they're 4-2 and two and uh, seem to be clicking right now as they learn uh, Scott Franzosi's spread offense. Yeah, I was, when we had uh, Franzosi on last week and I was kind of talking to him with the idea this was going to be kind of a, kind of a close game because Gardner had some players coming back and 
I mean, I saw Mount Blue um, play you guys in that, that earlier game, and I either either didn't see it or forgot just how fast they are. Um, they fast how fast uh, Kevon Johnson, the running back, gets around the side. Their quarterback Hunter Meeks is just his quickness just jumps off jumps off the even from, even from in the press box. You can just see it. His, he gets going so quickly. Uh, his acceleration, his burst is there, and uh, you know just just those two guys against Gardner, they're able to uh, they're able to, able to get down the field in a hurry. So you know they got other piece other pieces, Caleb Haynes and Kyle Fox and. They throw a lot at, at defenses. That's a that's a team that's really clicking right now. Yeah. Coach, is there a, kind of an unsung team that you've seen in the Pine Tree Conference so far right now that yeah, you don't I, want to play right now? Right. Well, I, I like like I said, I like Mount Blue too. Mm-hmm. Um, having all those skilled guys, but their inside their inside players are very very good. Yeah, um, the, the blocking schemes they have, because um, of course you know Lawrence is Lawrence. Mm-hmm. You know Lawrence Brunswick is Brunswick. You know they're um, they're going to pound it on you and stuff like that, but. Uh, Mount Blue. Also, I like Coney. You know, yeah. I've always I've always been a big fan of BL. I like the spread that he runs because he has a he has more of a mix of like a, like a Kevin Cooper sure. with, with the eleven personnel, the quarterback that can run, but he can throw it too. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, um, and Scotts and with um, big thing with Scott, they have um, Matt Freeman over there too. Matt's a very very smart yeah. coach. Matt's mm-hmm. a very very good coach. Um, they their their spread is. It's funny because all these teams that run the spread, they all run the same kind of formations, but they're all a little different. Yeah. Like Mount Blue's more of the, the counter tray, a little more to misdirection. Yeah. The quarterback but, might mm-hmm. run more in Mount right. Blue's, yeah. And Coney's is more, okay, we're coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, um, but with Mount Blue, though, they're, they're up front is, I think, very underrated. That, that, that two players, their they're left side of the line is, is as good as anybody's. Uh-huh. They're, 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 they're good. They're very, very good. And their defense is, uh, is, is very good, too. Uh, I mean, I, I think I had um, in, that, in that Gardner game, Gardner's first 13 attempts went for either one or minus one yard collectively, yes. and uh, Zach Delano had three sacks in that game. He's, he looks like he just can't be blocked sometimes. He's, he's a really – He's a prop. Yeah. Like we, <laughs> we, uh, we run triple options, so – Guys like him, you try to read, make the reads off of, and he just comes down so fast. And you know that read, that read comes a little faster than it does one team. <laughs> sure, and you're like, oh boy. <laughs> and know? for a team like you that's learning, it's tough right. to they face a guy like that. They have a, a um, and one thing you'll notice about is because we have their game from last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you one thing you'll notice from when they played us to where they are now, um, Scott's done a wonderful job of the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. They're they're up front is much crisper. The quarterback plays much crisper when they played us. Um, they're just they're a team like you guys. Have, they're, they're they're gelling at the right time. All right, let's look at some of the big games this week. We'll start in the Pine Tree Conference Class B with uh, Wyndham coming to Lawrence. Wyndham's kind of an interesting thing. They're three and three, but Drew, their three wins are Gardner, Hamden, Brewer, who are combined three and fifteen. Mm-hmm. Their three losses are against Brunswick, Coney, and uh, Class A Thornton Academy, who are all undefeated. So that kind of puts <laughs> Wyndham right smack dab in the middle of this league. Yeah, I think that that Coney game was kind of the best indicator of where they are. That was a game that was decided by a field goal in the la- in the closing <clears throat> seconds, and it just kind of painted Wyndham as that as that hard nosed team, defense first. Uh, I remember talking to um, BL before BL, Co- Coney coach BL Leopard before that game, and he said they're very they're multiple in what they do. They they can they throw a lot at you. They run, they throw, they do it in a bunch of different formations. They throw to the receivers, they throw to the tight ends. So it's uh, it's it's definitely a balanced team. Uh, they haven't been they haven't been all that high scoring this season. It looks like their defense has been the better unit from from a points perspective. Mm-hmm. But uh, just a tough nosed team and a team that probably should give Lawrence a a, a good test. Yeah, coach, you guys saw Lawrence a couple weeks ago. What stands out about the Bulldogs? The Lawrence is an old school Lawrence team. John Harrison teams, fundamentally sound. Mm-hmm. They're gonna come at you. They're gonna you no. Know, they're gonna run the buck sweep, but they're gonna run it three different ways. Yeah. You know, um, they're gonna hit you in the mouth. You know, they're gonna run the waggle. You know, their defense is gonna fly around. They um, do a wonderful job of fundamentals over there. John Harrison is a is a wonderful coach. Um, they are very, 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 very physical. Yeah. And if, you know, if you don't bring it, they're going to bring it to you. And, um, you know, they got a good stable of backs back there. They got a great combination of size and speed. Um, the two wings can run, you know, and run like the wind. Um, you know, to beat a Lawrence team, you, 
you you have to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. Right. They're not going to make that turnover. They're not going to make that dumb penalty at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Wyndham, too, um, <clears throat> I've been lucky to see them on tape also. Um, you know, they're, they're – I think they'll match – they match up better than Lawrence in a spread team because I kind of like Lawrence in a way. Sure. Because mm-hmm. they're going to they're gonna pound that ball off tackle. You know, they're going to be in shotgun, too. You know, they're going to be shotgun twins and things like that. But it's old school power G. There's, there's, you know, there's no, there's no hiding it. You know it's yeah. coming. You know, so um, it's that that'd be a very, uh, that'd be a very entertaining game to watch. Mm-hmm. Right. Another game in the Pine Tree Conference Class B: Drew Falmouth and Coney. Yeah, and you know Falmouth is also sitting there at three and three. They've had a very up and down season. You know, sometimes they look like, uh, like they're, like they're doing pretty well in the sleep, but then they had that rough game against Lawrence. Uh, that was kind of an indicator. Of maybe in Brunswick, what, yeah. Yeah, in Brunswick, maybe an indicator of you know. Good, just not quite that top level. And uh, uh, Coney seems to have found an extra gear with uh, the return of Jamal Carigli, the, uh, the running back and linebacker mm-hmm. for them. They've gone from being a team that relied on Riley Geyer to really do everything, whether it was throwing or running, to being uh, a team with just with just another another weapon who might be who might be their best uh, player with the ball in his hands. You know, it's probably a toss up between him and Geyer, but uh, that's that's going to be a tough matchup for Falmouth. Um, you know, certainly, certainly they can run with they can run with Coney based on on how the season has panned out to this point. But it does look like Coney right now is is uh is better than they is better than they have been um you know at any point of the season. Coach, again, you saw both these teams kind of break down Falmouth Coney for us. Well, Falmouth um, it, their roster is very small compared to compared to most every team in our league. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had a we saw them we played them we saw them play Everett Little. Um, they got a couple kids hurt in the game that we played us, and they got hurt. You know, like they're, they're they lost their best player in our game, right. and they lost their second best player too in our game. <laughs> and so um, that's that's the thing with in this league being so physical, you need depth. Sure, you need depth. Like you need at least you're gonna need almost two two rows of players. Um, and Coney, you know what they did to what they did to the Lewiston at Lewiston, yeah. you know, class eighteen, yeah. you know. Um, you know, BL has these kids playing, and their def- it, their offense is wonderful, but their defense is, you know, we we threw the kitchen sink. I we ran spread option, we ran old school, we ran we ran navy, like old navy <laughs> option, everything we could think of. Full house tea back. No, we, <laughs> you name it. We went. With, we tried everything we can, um, but their defense is phenomenal. There they because we didn't they didn't have the linebacker when we played them. Yeah, and um, thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, their their defense is fast. It's big and it's very very physical. Yeah, and that was uh, supposed to be the team, the unit that took the hit with all the players that they graduated, yeah, graduated from last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a, that's probably a uh, um, you know a good indication of of uh, what Brent Terrell is capable of as the defensive coordinator for Coney. Sure. They lose all those players. They get up basically a whole new starting uh, starting eleven and. They've they've allowed ten point eight points per game. It's the best figure in Class B North. Whole new players and just p- products the same. Yeah. All right. In Class C in uh, Class C North Big Eleven Conference, we have Herman four and two at Winslow five and one. We hit on this just a little bit ago. Um, Herman's two losses, Levitt and Bucksport, both teams that are in first place in their respective conferences. Um, Herman's good. I just don't know if they have the depth to match Winslow. Yeah, and some of those losses have been have been, you know, kind of. Decisive. Both right? those losses yeah. were lopsided. So, yeah. so it'd be one thing if, if their two losses were uh, down the wire, you know, oh, we're just a couple plays away from being 6-0 and kind of thing. Uh, I mean, we, we talked all about <clears throat> how just the head of steam Winslow has right now, and it looks really tough for a team the team has looked vulnerable to this point to come in there and beat them right now. Yeah, of course, if you ask Mike Savisky, the head coach at Winslow, Herman's Notre Dame. Or you know, he's, got, <laughs> he's got a way of, of motivating his team. And – I think he's still using that loss at Wells in week one, that 18-6 to loss as motivation. He keeps saying, that game taught us how to play football. Um, Coach, I'm sure, you know, in the past you've been able to, you know, use a a loss or something and say, hey, you know, remember that. You know, don't bring that feeling back. When I was at Spruce Mountain, um, actually it was a loss at Wells at Wells. Um, We had we played them um, uh, regular season, um, and it was a rainstorm. And it went right down, right down the, right down the last play of the game. And that previous year, they lost to him by forty. 
and we're, we use, hey, we can play against these guys, we can play against anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the kind of the turning point that we have. Like, okay, you know, this team is, you know, physical, big, physical, strong team. You know, we held them, whatever. And um, that kind of put us to the next kind of next strategy, you know, next level. Yes. Um, kids starting to believe in things like that. And, um, you know, also, too, in our little playoff run, we, we played a Levitt team uh, back in 2013 that beat Winslow by 30 points in the state championship game. Right. But we played them through like a 14-21 game or 7-21 game. Like, hey, we can, we can make a run here, guys. So, um, you know, it's, you can learn a lot from losses. Sure. Okay, and in Class D South, we have a game you mentioned earlier, Drew, uh, Spruce Mountain and Oak Hill. Yeah. Uh, we just talked about Oak Hill and, and how they've been, how they've been – uh, uh, on you know the arrows pointing up with them, and for Spruce, this is a this is a big game because even though they're five and one, they have kind of an ugly loss to uh, Lisbon on the um, on, on the on the schedule. It was a thirty five twenty one game, so you know they have they have something to something to prove to and and show whether they've kind of made up that gap because right now, uh, you know, Winthrop Monmouth Haldale looks like looks like the strongest team in that in that class. If Spruce Mountain comes in with a decisive uh, win over Oak Hill, that kind of might reset the narrative right. a little bit and say, okay, maybe this is not just this. This is a two horse race uh, rather than one team, you know, apparently pulling away. Right. And an eight man big game in the large school division: Mount Era and Marana Cook. Marana Cook still undefeated. Drew still undefeated, uh, and it's the matchup of the best scoring team in eight man versus the best defensive team. Marana Cook is uh, has the best defense, fourteen point three points allowed per game. Mount Era scored 43.7 points per game. So it's, you know, it's one of those something has to give kind of games. And uh, there's, there's some, uh, um, you know, vengeance, emotion, whatever on the line because Mount Era has only lost this point was to Miranda Cook, 38-18. So I bet you Mount Era is, is eager to prove that uh, uh, the, second, the second matchup won't go the way of the first. And uh, for Miranda Cook, this is, this is interesting because they have been playing kind of the weaker teams in, in the eight-man league uh, in recent weeks. And so this is kind of ramping up the competition, seeing how the you... The playoffs coming Yeah, up, see, see, how you, see how you adjust to it. So it should be, it should be a good game because you can see... Uh, you can make a case for either team in this game. And, uh, Coach, obviously with your background with uh, Miranda Cook, how, how happy are you to, to see uh, them oh, thriving it's, in this it's league? It's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to see. Uh, those kids, you know, they, um, they, they love football. You know, mm-hmm. um, the, you know when after, after last year, I, I met with the new athletic director, um, and I told him, "I go, this is an eight. Like, if you had an eight-man team, this is it. Yeah, like this school is made perfect for the eight-man league. Because um, we were, we were looking to have about twenty-eight, thirty kids come back, but it came out about twenty-four, mm-hmm. which is perfect. Three strings of kids. Sure, you know, good, <clears throat> good." combination of seniors juniors sophomores freshmen um you know and and with the parent support you know that they, they love their team so um you know i'm not i'm not surprised jordan those kids love jordan yeah you know and uh, jordan's a great kid um of course the assistant coach uh jake bessie yeah you know um he's you know he's actually helped me one year um he's a great kid too um so uh, I'm really glad to see, you know, Spruce Mountain with Dave Fry doing real, real well. Mm-hmm. I'm real glad to see Jordan doing real, real well. And with that Spruce Mountain team, Jack Bryant. Jack Bryant, st- the straw that stirs a drink. Yeah. If Jack Bryant gets on a roll, it's going to be a long night. Wow. Jack Bryant. Jack Bryant played for me as a freshman. He got freshman minutes and varsity running yeah. a triple option. Mm-hmm. If, Jack, if, Jack, if Jack gets hot, you know, it could be a long night for, for Oak Hill. Yeah. You have he's, to be a special player to get varsity minutes at any level. Right. He's a freshman. Yeah. Jack, Jack is, um, I don't know if you guys talked to Jack, he's, he's a different kid. <laughs> he's, he's an old school J, a little more football, traditional, sure. tough as nails. You know, he won't show up, but he plays it. Did you keep tabs uh, enough to know what Lisbon might have done to kind of slow him, <clears throat> slow him down, or did you just see the score? I of the just game? saw the score of the game. Yeah. It's it's it. Here's the thing about high school football too, is um, all it takes is a couple of easy early turnovers, 
Next yeah. thing you know, boom, you're down, you're down right. 14, you know, something like that. It's, you know, it's, it's you know, because like, like with Winthrop, you know, Winthrop coming down there and doing what they did to Lisbon, and then Lisbon doing what they did to Spruce Mountain. So it's kind of like this, it's like that cycle. It's, it's sure. who's, who's going to play the cleaner game that night, Yeah. you know. And uh, uh, go back to Miranda Cook for a second. It seems like they were, and this, this feeds into your point about being built for eight men, it was, you know, with 11 men, they have eight really good athletes on the field and three either undersized or just weaker players. Right. And so in 11 men, you can target those pe- you can target those players and it right. makes a long night. And then you take those players off the field for eight men. Now all of a sudden you have a, a rock-solid unit out right. there. Like last year we had um, like Dakota Demont. Like he was a true – he could have played in any league. Yeah. Any, he played mm-hmm. class D, no problem. Then we had Garrett Liberty that could play in any team. But that's about it, <laughs> you know. And now with eight man having the three guys up front, now you can put Garrett in the slot. You can put Garrett in the back. You can put Garrett at receiver. You, you can move guys around, yeah. you know. And and such the style of defense that they play, you know, you or you can't sit there and um, you have to challenge them. That's why the scoring so high in eight man football mm-hmm. because there's no safety. Once you go by a second level, it's gone. Sure, right. That's and, and it's made to be that way. It's not. It's it's made to score. Um, you know, when you get a kid like Garrett Liberty that can throw and run now, yeah. it's it's a special combination to have. And they have an interesting combination with the receivers, uh, Isaac Philbrook yeah. and Joey DuPont, where one is tall, lanky, you know, can get up there and, and get, uh, you know, win battles for the high balls, and then Joey DuPont is like a, a much sturdier built, you know, looks like a tight end over there. So well, it's Joey started yeah. linebacker, he's a middle linebacker as a freshman. <laughs> well, Sam linebacker in the middle, you know. <laughs> You're like okay, Joey. <laughs> you know he's 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 blossomed to a wonderful athlete, and he's you know, and, and I'm glad. I'm I'm so glad to see those they, those kids deserve it. You know yeah. they. Um, my first year, we had one senior. That's all we had, and uh, you know, see them, you know, to see them being successful, and it's it's a wonderful thing. Football, good football's good. It yeah. doesn't make a yeah. difference if it's eleven man or eight man. Right. Good right. football's good football. I think. Everybody in the state is starting to learn that. I'm, yeah. s- I'm hearing less and less of the, uh, you know, oh, 11 man or nothing kind of talk. You know, it, that, I heard a lot of that too. Yeah. And um, the, prob- the problem is, is, do you really want 60 to nothing games? Right. No. Well, like, you know, this scenario, the year, like this, like, well, this year right now for me, okay, um, there's some games that we just know aren't going to come out our way. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> it's not going to come out our way because we're not there it's yet. It's part of the growing process. Exactly. Right? Now, when I was at Miranda Cook the year before, they knew the same thing. Mm-hmm. But you want your kids coming off the bus knowing, hey, we can win. Yeah, right. We can win. We, you want the crowd behind you being like, hey, we can win. You don't want just the cheering game 50 to nothing like, great job, Tommy. You made a tackle. <laughs> you want them, you know, to get into it. You know, you want the community to get into it. You want to get the school to get into it. You know? Yeah. Okay, well, Coach, I appreciate you coming in. That's going to do it this week for Gridiron Girls. We'll see you uh, next week when we talk about the regular season finales and some playoff scenarios. Uh, For Drew, for Coach Polking, I'm Travis. Thanks for joining us.